you guys haven't been following along day-to-day -day coverage with the Rittenhouse trial, don't worry, you boys got your back on this one because I've been enjoying it thoroughly and I know that I can't put any trust in the mainstream media and even social media. Social media's recounts are just as abysmal. If you want to take a look at the previous video, it uh, pretty much encapsulates what the fuck is going around there. All of the tastemakers and influencers when it comes to the trial are um, just despicable, disgusting human beings. So, so, um, again, it's, it's no reason why the, that's the predominating or the predominant, sorry, I don't think predominating is a word, at least the, uh, grammatically speaking in the, uh, upcoming sentence, why that is the predominant opinion out there that Kyle Rittenhouse is, yeah, no, he's totally guilty. Uh, there was nothing in the trial that would have dissuaded you anyway, except for the people that are coming out and saying like, nobody's mind has been changed from, okay, that was clearly self-defense when we seen the videos that have been out there for 14 fucking months without, you know what, having to rely on any blurry doctored photography photography which we'll get to shortly no nobody's mind has been changed from that was clearly self-defense to no oh, the prosecution really has presented a very compelling argument as to why that was cold-blooded murder N nobody's going that direction they're going from that kid was a murderer to oh my god i watched the trial uh, that is clearly self-defense under any conceivable metric the reason why you don't hear those stories um, is because Facebook users unable to find results when searching for Rittenhouse amid teens homicide trial. And then you go on YouTube. Or what are the streams that get promoted? Washington Post has one up. Fox News has one up. PBS has one up. I've been watching Ricada Law's coverage of it because it, it, it's got hilarious legal commentary on it as well. And they're breaking everything down. And it's a, it's a really fun watch. And it's making this far more tolerable than it would be otherwise. But he's not getting any help from the algorithm, that's for true. And no, PBS just providing a, a lackluster feed, if we're being completely honest, of the trial is still getting 90,000 views. Washington Post, okay, um, Fox News at the same time, they're getting 30, 40,000 views. Law and Crime Network, 50,000 views. All of those all together, the ones that are getting uh, boosted, if you just type out and you just search Kyle Rittenhouse trial, those are the ones that are going to pop up. Not the exemplary coverage that you're going to get over on Ricada's stream which was once again just a very fun watch on a relatively kind of uneventful day until you got to about the end of it we'll get to that shortly because there were a few different witnesses that got called okay so first there was a doctor uh, I'm, I'm gonna forget his um his first name dr black who was the videographer on the day uh, he was rather the um, forensic video analyst uh, who has a wealth of information, a wealth of experience on the subject, and could have been a very compelling witness if uh, Mike Richards there, uh, hey there, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Black, if you could go ahead and uh, just uh, slow down that video and instead of just showing the uh, two minutes and 30 seconds of the, the events, uh, everything that night that happened that's in question, if you could just, you know, not play that all out to just show the jury how long Kyle Rittenhouse had to uh, make, those, uh, uh, make those decisions himself, excuse me. If you could just not do that and just break everything down and bore more people with a lot more video that would be great okay cool because yeah this was pointed out a lot it's like that would have been very important if black would have just showed the video of everything from the time of the rosenbaum incident to the time that kyle tries to approach <laughs> The police that were there, that instead of accepting his surrender, which he was always trying to do the entire fucking way along, pepper sprayed him and told him to get the fuck out of there. That's why cops are so retarded, okay? I like cops. I like certain cops, okay? That's why I don't like any group en masse. I like certain individuals, because they're hunks of shit. If you gotta take everybody in totality, except for journalists, they're all pretty scummy. So yeah, you had the, um video expert that was up there he was there for a very long time they had to set up a whole bunch of other specific things and then forgive me if i'm forgetting one other person that was inconsequential and then you had a female um detective who was attesting to some firearm stuff as well and was mostly there to just say yeah kyle didn't re-rack the gun cool thanks for showing up and then you had drew hernandez somebody who i know i'm familiar with i don't know if you guys are as well he's an independent 
a journalist and commentator online, and he does an excellent job of things. And he was there down in Kenosha on a Sunday and Tuesday night, and he caught all of the violence that was there with his uh, body cam and with his uh, cell phone. And he provided, he was probably the most, and don't take this the wrong way, he was probably the most hostile witness who was in the box giving his testimony because Binger is an insufferable cocksucker. And he was really revealing his entire trial strategy by trying to paint this more obviously as being a political trial. There's nothing political about this. There's nothing political about self-defense. But that's the way that Binger and fat fuck Kraus want to paint this because they figured that if they can inject some sort of race element well it's really 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 tough to do that unless you're an unhinged twitter lefty which that's the base that these morons are trying to fucking pander to they're just trying to get their upvotes on reddit because that's a thing and they're trying to get their likes and shares and their retweets on fucking twitter they're just playing to that crowd because they don't have the facts they don't have the law <sighs> but if they can somehow turn this into a left versus right issue and put that before the jury they can try to mobilize some sort of tribalism i guess they think that that's going to be an out they're just bags of shit trying to say that drew hernandez who provided hours and hours worth of footage of the riots that happened that night okay from his body cam and from his cell phone taking evidence about what happened that night trying to say that oh he's biased because he's a conservative in so many words you just knew it, they've just been throwing the prosecution has they've just been throwing hail marys and grasping at straws and every other cliche you can think of for the past couple of days because they haven't been doing well they have not been doing well since the first couple of days of trial and they're just trying anything at this point and they're getting away with it too, which is even more egregious. But here's what, because Drew Hernandez is probably the most notable witness, not the most notable event on the day, but the most notable witness. Freelance journalist, uh, Andrew Hernandez, uh, testified Thursday in the murder trial of Kyle Rittenhouse in Kenosha, Wisconsin, uh, that the defendant tried to de-escalate a conflict between riders and armed guards watching a local business. It was very funny because he had footage on that, but um, the prosecution just couldn't find it, and they just needed to take his word on that. It was, it, uh, imagine that, something that was um, sympathetic to Kyle and would have shown him in a good light, it just didn't have that footage readily available. They had it, but they just didn't have it available. Very weird. <laughs> Hernandez, who traveled the country documenting the Black Lives Matter riots of 2020, that is absolutely true, was called as a defense witness and said that Rittenhouse had been successful for the moment in diffusing tension between the two groups on August 25th, 2020. The testimony was re irrelevant because prosecutors had sought to portray Rittenhouse's actions as provocative. I, I guess he wouldn't just lay down and die, so I guess I kind of provoked some sort of a response from Jump Kick Man, Rosenbaum, Gro Grosskrutz, and Huber, I guess. Under state law in Wisconsin, self-defense can only be evoked if the defendant did not provoke an attack, which he didn't. All of the fucking video evidence shows that. If the defendant did provoke an attack, he or she could then only use a deadly force in self-defense if it is reasonable to fear death of some Oh, of serious bodily harm. Somebody telling you that they're going to fucking kill you and then gut you in two different set, er, statements and then proceeded to throw something at you and uh, also try to chase you down and take your gun. Okay, I think that kind of, that, that, that fits fear of death or serious bodily harm, okay? Um, getting kicked in the head and then having your head driven down to the pavement, that, that seems to work as well. Having a skateboard swung at your head multiple times in, in an attempt to decapitate you, or as Mike Richards would, or Mark, Mike, whatever, Richards would say, I try to separate his uh, head from his shoulders. Opening wasn't strong. And then also, Gage Grosskrutz, um, the darling of Good Morning America, if you can fucking believe that, had a gun in his hand. I think all of that fits. I don't know, but I'm not on the jury, okay? That's why they're trying so many different strategies, because they don't have anything. The prosecution, this is. Hernandez said that Rosenbaum, uh, who charged Rittenhouse, uh, was 
Oh, and was the first person Rittenhouse shot that evening. This is not under dispute. Later became agitated when he saw someone put out a dumpster fire that Ryder uh, right, uh, sorry, had been trying to use to obstruct the road. After that point, Hernandez said the riders identified the individual who had used the fire extinguisher with the volunteer guards. Uh, they then turned their attention away from police and towards the guards who had uh, gathered at a nearby gas station. He testified that Rosenbaum led a charge into the gas station. Then he became physically aggressive, shouting, shoot me, meh, meh, shoot me, meh, meh. Uh, to provoke a fight with the guards uh, who had gathered at the gas station. Absolutely. Later, Hernandez added he saw Rosenbaum trying to light another fire, this time with a face partly concealed by a t-shirt. He thought um, a very, very angry five foot three manlet um, with a shaved head, blocky shoulders, and a shitty disposition would somehow have his identity obscured by the t-shirt that he was also wearing, now just being, I don't know, inches above from where it originally was. He's not a very smart guy. Thankfully, he's dead. Kyle, or a person with purple gloves, you've all seen the pictures, you kind of figure as much that it is Kyle, uh, then put out the second fire and asked if anyone needs medical, something that he was yelling at and was successful and having people take him up on his offer on multiple times that night, at least three that I can remember. He then saw Rosenbaum charge a Rittenhouse from behind and saw and heard a firearm discharge, not from Rittenhouse, that was uh, Joshua Zamitsky, who was also being charged by the department, or Sorry, the district attorney's office for arson on the night and has been called as witness. I fucking wonder why. When Rittenhouse turned around, Hernandez testified and had video footage to show again. He saw Rittenhouse charging towards him. Asked the defense attorney, Corey Sharafisi. Uh, I'm going to mispronounce that until the, the end of this trial. He's literally the only good lawyer that's in that entire fucking courthouse. Richards is just an absent-minded ass and... If you just watch the body language of Shirafisi whenever Binger talks, and especially when Kraus is up there, because normally they're kind of doing cross or they're trying, they're doing direct um, at the same time as one another. And whenever Kraus or Binger says anything to the judge, you can just see Shirafisi cover his face or just crunch up or just elicit these uh, expressions of sheer disgust. It's very funny to watch if you watch any of the other coverage and you just watch it back for fun. I do that because I'm a loser. Uh, he then saw Rosenbaum charge Rittenhouse from behind. When Rittenhouse turned around, uh, Hernandez testified he saw Rosenbaum charging towards him. Asked by the defense attorney, Shirafisi, if he had seen Rittenhouse acting aggressively that night, Hernandez replied in no way, shape, or form. The first time I saw Kyle, he actually de-escalated the situation. Hernandez confirmed. Uh, he saw, Oh, he also said he had not seen Rittenhouse point his firearm at anyone. On cross-examination, the prosecutor attempted to imply, this was Binger, by the way, that Hernandez was biased against Black Lives Matter protests, which you call riots. Yep. And then also said that he was biased because he retained counsel, okay? He got a lawyer in Madison, Wisconsin that handed over the video footage that he collected that night to the DA's office, okay, which seems like fairly fucking standard practice. I don't know. I've never found myself in that situation, but as somebody who's documenting riots throughout the entire year, I think he'd probably have a better handle on the situation. And then, unbeknownst to anyone, that law firm happened to be the same one that the defense counsel used to initiate a phone dump on Kyle Rittenhouse's phone to extract the information that was on Kyle's phone and put it out in a displayable formats, okay, for everybody to see. That somehow constitute, at least in Binger's mind, or at least what he was trying to put across unsuccessfully, at least in my opinion, that somehow constitutes a um, conflict of interest. But again, it's just confession through projection for Binger. And then, yeah, one of the good things that, uh, sh that Judge Schroeder did on the day was he interjected at that point as well, or maybe that was also by saying that, oh, oh Hernandez has a bias because he works now for... Uh, Officer Brandon Brandon Tatum's uh, website and his channel as well. So somehow something in the future that he was doing would somehow influence what he was doing at the time. But again, 
on the video footage that he provided, he didn't have any commentary of his own thoughts over the top of that. And he was trying to drag in his tweets on the night, which was saying apparently there was a shooter on the night and he had a, a very basic idea of the facts before he could review his video footage. And that was somehow commentary and bias. He did a very poor job of doing that. Not Hernandez. Hernandez was a very different change of pace, okay? Because a lot of the uh, the witnesses that were up there being questioned by both sides were mostly affable people, okay? But after a long trial, I can see why they put Hernandez at the at the end of this trial because he is a little bit more of an excitable individual. If you've seen any of the work that he's done as being a commentator online as well, is because he wasn't going to put up with any of Binger's tricks. And that was very apparent. And uh, some of the in, uh, some people were apparently live tweeting from inside the courthouse, also seeing during the cross-examination of Kyle Rittenhouse yesterday that the jury was completely and utterly disengaged from everything Binger was doing from like hour one all the way through hour five because he would just continue to go on and on and on and badger the witness over and over and over again. Those were tactics that both of the prosecutors were using for pretty much everybody. So, again, just throwing in that little curveball at the end, I don't see anything wrong with it. He just presented very good testimony, Hernandez this is, and it was a little bit different because it was just highlighting how insufferable Binger was. But again, I don't know how this is going to play because... It, You've seen the response if you watched the previous video of 200 and some odd thousand, 238,000 people liking LeBron James's absolutely brain dead fucking take that still infuriates me. If you have that many people out there and then you have the distilled fact that, uh, well, right now there's, what would that be, 18 different uh, jurors that are up there and uh tomorrow there might not be like a formal trial day uh, it's very interesting because there's supposed to be like motions or some work that's going to be done between the judges and uh, counsel as well to figure out how they're going to be doing uh, jury instructions that are going to be happening on monday because monday is going to be a big fucking day so that's going to be that might be just the entire day's coverage. I might just break that up into three videos because it's going to be pretty intense because there's going to be up to five hours of closing statements from both parties, from the prosecution and from the defense, as well as jury instructions as well. And then the prosecution also gets their closing statements and then a rebuttal to the defense as well. So that's going to be an entire day in and of itself. And then, of course, they're going to figure out who on the jury of the tw eight or 12 of the 18 that are over listening to everything they're going to be selected they're going to be sequestered and they're going to be rendering their decision which theoretically probably shouldn't take that long okay either direction really because who really knows how this is going to go everybody's mind is probably already made up so the rest of this is just for show and Monday's going to be pretty fucking explosive, uh, just because we've seen everything that has gone on so far, especially this past week. It's been incredible, okay, from Monday all the way through today. And then today, like I said, okay, Hernandez was probably the most notable witness, but one thing, okay, something that the prosecution was trying to bring in as incredibly late evidence, okay, enhanced, altered updated, enhanced, refreshed, extrapolated, interpolated fucking photo of a blob on a screen that the prosecution is trying to say is one thing, but your eyes will tell you another. I'm going to show you the picture in question because they have two pictures that they've so far presented to the jury. Okay, so they, they don't have any context on this and they're obviously going to be highlighting it and telling you of all of the importance that it holds during closing statements. But I'm going to show you a picture here and uh, uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. If you already know, use your own eyes, I guess. Here is one of the two frames, one of the two frames that was presented to the jury that the prosecution and the defense bickered over for a couple of hours uh, right at the end of the day of the court hearing. Um, what, what do you see? Okay. On the left here, you have the visually enhanced picture. Okay. And over here, you have the original you have the original it's the drone footage that showed up on friday and that was worked over by um 
both the defense's expert, uh, Dr. Black. Actually, I'm not even entirely sure if he's seen that because the only person who could um, testify to the authenticity and the validity of this footage, this enhanced footage, was somebody who couldn't even say if uh, the enhanced picture was anything that could be accurate, okay? He didn't have any idea of uh, how the enhancement works, okay? He knew what the the software was that they were using in order to take this picture right here, the one on the right, and make it the one on the left. But outside of that, he, he couldn't say anything. In fact, he just discredited the work that the computer program is claiming to do. Now, again, if you've been looking at the picture that's there, what do you see? What do you, what do you think that you see? Because I'm looking at this. I have no idea what it is. They showed the video that was apparently enhanced and, I don't know, cleaned up and magnified and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't show you anything different, really. It's just uh, two pictures, okay? Two pictures. It's apparently supposed to show you that Kyle Rittenhouse is aiming his gun. He's apparently aiming his gun at Joshua Zeminski, okay? Somebody who's also not in the video footage, okay? Even when it's all blown out, even when it's shown, okay? That's something that the prosecution is saying, oh, okay, no, he's just off screen. You, you don't see him, but Kyle Rittenhouse is definitely pointing his gun at him. Take a look at the evidence. Well, we're looking at the evidence. What, what do you see? Okay. You see a, a white thing that's apparently a sign, maybe, don't know. Um, uh, somebody who's holding like a novelty sized WWE championship belt, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I don't see anything. Like, outside of saying and being told that somebody's holding a gun there, I just have to take you at face value and I'd have to assume that you're being honest. But this is coming from the prosecution, who has spent the past two weeks being anything but fucking honest. But Jack Posobiec, whose Twitter page we're going to be running down for commentary on this because nobody else has any sort of uh, run running commentary on it. He was mostly live tweeting this insanity. He points out here, if this shows Kyle Rittenhouse holding the rifle, how did he suddenly become left-handed? Again, I, we'll pull this up. As you can see, he's apparently standing like this. Okay, this is as best as you see him. And then all of a sudden... Now he's holding his rifle like this, which he hasn't been shown in any of the actual undoctored footage because, well, I can feel free to actually say that it's <laughs> doctored footage because even the prosecution's expert witness as to the veracity of cleaning up these images, he couldn't say that it wasn't undoctored, he just said that, oh, it's peer reviewed. Cool. I show my friend a picture, it's automatically peer-reviewed by that standard. And then also, okay, uh, Jack Posobiec adding a couple of lines goes to show you that if these, this is supposed to be the exact same footage, okay? This is the original picture here. You got the one on the right and then you got the one on the left. Why is it that um, Kyle Rittenhouse is, is, is leaning, okay? Why is it that... Um, from what you can see from the original footage, okay, you have the woman bent or bent at the torso, okay. Hence uh, this a diagonal-ish line, this line on a bit of an acute angle, and then you have Kyle Rittenhouse up and down with a line intersecting what should be his hat. Again, I'm trying to piece this together because my eyesight, especially when we remove the glasses, is absolutely piss poor. But even when I put them on, it's a little bit suspect to begin with. And that's supposed to be his hat, okay. I've seen plenty of footage over the coverage of this trial and he was wearing a white hat at the time so okay cool maybe can't really make it out but there's somebody who has a white something with white at the top of it all right and then you have it intersecting once again and he's clearly leaning forward <laughs> i i think that that's reasonable doubt and that's all the, the that the defense has to prove but again it just went through some Absolutely. Yeah, I guess you got a little bit of a preview as to what we're going to be talking about next. It didn't give you enough information, so stick around for that one. But the defense went absolutely bonkers. We're just going to run down the tweets here. Okay. Prosecutors are now attempting to admit 11th hour evidence of a blurry algorithm enhanced video frame that the claim, oh, that they claim shows Kyle Rittenhouse pointing a gun at Rosenbaum. It's Zeminski. Okay, he got a little bit wrong, but that's fine. If prosecutors are claiming Kyle pointed his rifle at riders before Rosenbaum chased him, why didn't they call any of the riders to testify that he pointed his gun at them? And why didn't any of the video evidence that was there that we've seen extensively 
ever show any of that. It didn't. Nothing even close to any of that. You could call Zeminski, oh wait, that would be opening up a Pandora's box of disaster. I can understand why. If the prosecution is claiming that Kyle pointed his rifle at the Zeminskis, okay, uh, Joshua Zeminski and Kelly Zeminski, his girlfriend who were there, who are like 1,000% Antifa members, that's why they aren't being called anyways, and also the pending charges, uh, then call the Zeminskis and have them testify. They won't, and we all know why, for multiple reasons. So, uh, the judge is allowing the algorithm doctored picture uh, to be presented. Prosecutors Banger and Kraus claim it shows Kyle written, or yeah, Kyle aimed his rifle at the Zeminskis. No eyewitnesses are testifying to the event to tell the court what happened. So the only time that this is going to be presented with any sort of commentary is going to be during the closing statements on Monday. Okay, and this is going to be central, central to the closing statements. And outside of just being shown without context, these two pictures, the jury's going to have no fucking idea what the hell they're looking at, what the hell they're supposed to be looking at. So this is going to be new evidence being presented at closing trial that's never been attested to by a witness, that has never been properly certified by any expert. It's just clearly doctored footage. We'll just run down the rest of this for completion's sake. So, Kraus, a uh, fat boy there. Uh, just ask the judge to look at it on a 4K TV because it looks clear. Interesting. If you've ever seen, and this was, by the way, 1980 by 844 footage. That's what it was blown up to be anyways. That's because the TV adds pixels. Central to the argument that the defense was making that this isn't legitimate evidence because it's making, changing pictures. It is. It's using algorithms to assess the pixels that are there and to make their best guess estimate as to what is supposed to be there in that space when the picture is well if you've ever seen the fucking really hack procedural television shows enhance and zoom that's what it's doing okay otherwise everybody would look like 8-bit 8 8 -bit super mario and again that would actually probably give a better description of what happened in those two pictures if it was processed through the nintendo entertainment system I've always said this, I can't stand true motion. It adds fake stuff that isn't there, looks awful, and deactivate it every time I'm somewhere that it has, oh, that TV has it. That's that motion blur that you get where the things just kind of have a soap opera-y effect, okay? That's what people colloquially uh, refer to it as. It's the motion blur that's on there that makes everything look and appear smoother because there's no tangible information that's there. It's simply being filled in by a program, which we don't know what that program is actually doing, how it works. We just got to take this guy's opinion on it. Now, what is upscaling on a 4K TV? Uh, upscaling relies on a process called interpolation, which we heard multiple times during the uh, experts testimony which is really just a glorified guessing game exactly that's supposed to be um legally binding information in a murder trial cool the defense needs to ask one question to this video expert where oh were you there can you possibly tell us this is what happened thus exposing the gaping hole in the prosecution's case Are they asked can you possibly tell us what happened but they tried their best to get this um a doctored footage to not be part of the case as it was added like literally today it, it would have been admitted yesterday if they could have used the uh, pull and zoom i don't know i don't have an ipod or i don't have an iphone because i'm not a 14 year old girl i have a real person phone enhance and zoom pull and zoom i don't give a fuck if they could use that off of an ipad and show the jury it'll be interesting to see what happens okay if there's motions tomorrow we might talk about it again tomorrow but if not um monday's the day to watch if you're going to be watching any of this for the first time, I would highly recommend it. I would also highly recommend going back and watching any of the older streams that uh, has been out there if you're interested, especially probably the second week. But then again, if you're just a glutton for punishment, last Friday with all of the defenses, uh, just random witnesses that went up there and then just kind of self emulated So they have a lot in common with um, the weekend of uh, the 25th of August, 2020. With that said, thank you. Thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.